the Portal to Ascension mission officially began in 2008. After 15 years of evolution and thousands of events, from live to online and back to live again, there was always an awareness that when we begin creating events internationally, the mission will shift into its next phase. That time is now. Portal to Ascension is traveling to Glastonbury in August 2023 to fulfill this mission. This gathering of incredible luminaries traveling from all over the world to join forces in Avalon is a sacred pilgrimage to these ancient lands. And we invite you to embark on this quest with us. The Portal to Ascension Glastonbury is not only a conference, it is a retreat, a tour, and grid work. Together we are connecting the powerful mysteries and the ley lines of the heart of Earth activating and uniting together as one. This three-day event will feature Laura Eisenhower, Anton Parks, Geraldine Orozco, Vivian Chauvet, Sage Oneness, Lori Spagna, and many more. Your MCs are Neil Gore, Alan Steinfeld, and Joan of Angels. As a collective, we are waking up from a deep slumber, aligning to our true potential. What will we create? What will we envision? What are the possibilities? Join us in this ancient land for a unique opportunity and a gathering that will activate, elevate, inspire, and uplevel all that attend. August 11th to 13th, 2023. Sign up now at ascensionglassenbury.com. We have a brand new speaker to our platform. We are so happy to welcome her. This is Erin Lyons. She's a universal channeler, a light language healer, and divine feminine biz and wealth coach. She works closely with the Universal Council of One, a collective of universes and source kingdoms, as well as the galactic and angelic realms. Her role for the collective is to grid higher dimensional frequencies into the earth to support the ascension into 5D timelines encompassed with love, unity, and abundance. She does this through cellular and DNA activations, Stargate healing attunements, and teaching about soul mastery. So Erin, I'm so happy to meet you today. Come on in. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. Can you see and hear me okay? We can see and hear your beautiful self really okay. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I thought we would start a little bit with you telling us a little bit about how you came into these gifts of yours, what they are, and then we can actually experience them. Okay, yes. So, you know, I've always been a seeker from the time that I can remember um, since being probably five or six. I just had this desire to understand the world I was living in and just felt like there was there was something beyond there was something more so um, I would say I felt spirit around me at a very young age um, and I'll just fast forward into my um, my late teens early 20s the seeking started to really uh, just become more intense I couldn't suppress it any longer and that really just triggered a, a deep soul remembrance and so um, I did end up stumbling into a few plant medicine experiences that just totally blew me throughout consciousness um, and I had an ego death. I was able to remember my purpose. I was able to remember my connection to the angelic and galactic realms. And then the gifts really started to activate in terms of um, channeling. Um, and so fast forward about seven years later, um, that is the work that I do full time now. So here we are. That. That's just amazing. That's beautiful. Because I understand you were not in the spiritual realm when you woke up. Is that true? Um, do you mean in terms of the work that I was doing? Right. In terms of the work you were doing. So it well, kind of. Sure. Yeah. So I've. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I have a background of working on Wall Street prior to um, sort of coming out of the spiritual closet and doing this work um, and sharing myself online. But in terms of being spiritually awakened and connected to um, my guides and channeling and, and that type of thing, I was always doing that. I just wasn't doing it um, 
for the world yet. I knew that the time would come, but as my guides like to explain it, there were a series of um, experiences and lessons and challenges that I needed to go through. And so my career work um, as a stockbroker and licensed wealth advisor really helped me to anchor into some of those lessons. So a lot of my work now is revolved around mastering uh, manifestation and money and abundance and those types of things. So it's all interconnected. So do you have, I know that you do channeling, trans channeling, and you do light language. Do your guides have messages for us today? Absolutely. So you want to share? Um, yeah, so the, Arc, the, the Ninth Dimensional Arcturian Council wants to come through. And so I'm just going to allow them to just kind of come through in a trans channel format and share um, what's on their hearts. And um, they also want to ask any questions. So if you guys want to share questions in the chat, Joan is going to help me and we'll kind of do like a Q&A. And then they also have a special uh, light language activation. Ooh, okay. I'm going to just be right here and waiting okay. if you need me. Okay. Thank you so much. Just going to tune to their frequency. Yes, yes, we are here. We are the Ninth Dimensional Arcturian Council or um, the, the Ninth Dimensional Arcturian Council that you know us to be. And we are extraordinarily excited to be here with all of you today. And we are thankful for this gathering. This is one of many gatherings that will continue to happen um, on your planet as you merge into the new earth timelines. And so what is it that we wish to speak with you about Today, we wish to make it very simple. We want to speak to you about love and we want to speak to you about your direct connection to the quantum field, that your heart is a portal that connects you to the infinite. Many of you are asking, who am I? What is my star seed lineage? Uh, what, what is my background? Wh where do I come from? Who am I? And dear ones, it is very simple. You are all that is. You are an expression of infinite creation. And we want you to remember that before your purpose or what you know to be your purpose as a star seed or a light worker or an earth angel, you are simply experiencing all that is. And we wish to help you remember how to experience all that is from a place of joy and unity and bliss and connection and excitement to be playing this game within source consciousness. And so we're gonna ask you to place your hands on your heart. And before we take questions, we are just going to be expanding, expanding, expanding your heart chakra so that you can experience this information that's coming forth on every layer of your being, expanding the heart chakra, opening you up, releasing dense frequencies allowing you to remember this divine connection between yourself and all that is. And attuning to your heart portal is so important because your heart is the doorway to any and every dimension within creation that you can fathom. It does not come from the ego mind. You do not access higher realms of consciousness from the mind. It happens through the heart. And so you have to learn how to be in the heart, how to listen to the heart. And the heart is the center of divine intelligence. It is directly connected to source and infinite creation. And so placing these hands on the heart, you're just sending frequencies of love imprinting within your cellular system to override any ideas of unworthiness, of separation, of lack, allowing you to vibrationally attune to this frequency of love. For you are love itself and you are love beyond what your circumstances may be showing you 
in your current reality. And just sit in the silence of the intelligence of your heart. Feel this connection happening. This remembrance, this frequency that is always here for you. Okay. We are now ready to accept questions. We, we don't have questions yet. But I have some questions. Okay. How, how would you help someone who wants to learn how to open up to light language to allow that to start to flow through them? And how do we interpret that light language? Because I understand you speak light language. Yeah. Light language is a, we would say it is like speaking in sacred geometry. Um, the light body has to expand to be able to anchor in some of these frequencies. So the first step is actually opening your heart um, as we have led with. Opening the heart allows you to attune to the frequencies and will allow you to be a, a channel of those divine frequencies. Um, and if it is in alignment with your uh, personal soul plan, it will be activated. So start with the intention. I would like to be a channel of the divine. I would like to be a vessel for higher vibrational frequencies to come through. And your higher self will guide you as to where you need to expand your heart. Um, this is what many of you know to be shadow work. So the more shadow work you do, you will naturally become um, a, a channel and, and be attuned to higher vibrational frequencies, which can be translated in the form of light language. And do we each have the ability to do this? Yes. However, there are, mm, we would say, contractual agreements. Um, there are certain points on the individual path wherein it, it might, it may not be the, um, we would say, appropriate time for the soul. It, it depends. But yes, the, the innate ability is um, available to all. It, it's just a matter of where you are in your consciousness, where you are in this journey, and if it is a part of your work. But typically, if you are asking, it is because um, it, is, it is something that is also calling you forward. I understand. And so we have a question in the chat from Princess. How do you know who you're channeling? Oh, that is a beautiful question. So the channel, um, she knows who she is channeling through the frequency. Um, she's very uh, attuned to uh, this Arcturian consciousness coming through. So um, she feels our vibration and she knows that we are coming through as well as uh, other guides that she works with very closely. Uh, the, there's a difference in the vibration and um, she is also clairaudient. So we will just tell her and she will know. Got it. So <clears throat> this one already knows her gifts. Do you, do you think that's true for many of us that we know what we kind of are tuned into our gifts, but we don't already have the confidence of that? Mm, yes, dear one, fear, 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 fear is the frequency that separates you from uh, the knowingness of your purpose for it is, um, it is sort of impossible to not know your purpose because it has been encoded within your soul blueprint. It is, it is something that you can never truly forget. However, fear distorts what the heart already knows. Fear distorts um, what, what is already a, a part of who you are when, when you are born and you come through this human soul matrix into this time-space reality. You carry the codes for that which uh, you are here to contribute and experience. However, um, the mind and fear can oftentimes work together to create distortion, create confusion, create doubt. Um, and so that is why we always say, go into the heart. Your heart is direct connection to pure intelligence and it will, it will guide you and it will lead you um, appropriately. That leads us to our next question, which is what is the best way to stay heart centered throughout the day and in a state of presence while we navigate the lower frequencies so we can actually do this work. 
we are grateful um, for this question, dear ones, and navigating daily reality is a part of your mastery. It is, it is a part of the work that um, you are here to do as a soul who's helping Gaia expand into new earth frequencies. And so when you approach these challenges from a place of neutrality, when you approach uh, challenges and circumstances with love, you transmute them into love and you will experience them as love. Um, scanning the collective, uh, what many humans do is judge what they are experiencing judge what they are experiencing, label these experiences as bad, or um, specifically, we would say also in the spiritual community, um, believing that there is a certain level of spiritual uh, pristineness that they always have to be held to, which doesn't allow them to fully accept all of their experiences and embrace them as um simply phases that expands them. So whatever you are experiencing, if you choose to see it as expansion, you will experience it as expansion. And um, that is what it means to be in the heart. Being in the heart sim simply means being in neutrality. And neutrality is unconditional love itself, where you are not creating polarity between what is good and what is bad. And you are simply saying, I am a being who is journeying throughout creation and all experiences are valid and valued and expand me as a soul. Then the gratitude will cultivate in your beingness. And uh, the, the grat gratitude will override the feeling of judgment or that which you would want to call bad. Wow. So, so in a sense, there is no real good or evil, is there, except as we determine it? Is that kind of the way spirit works? We see these energies as frequencies. They, there are infinite uh, vibrational frequencies within creation, and you are simply experiencing different frequencies. Um, the, the neutrality is uh, understanding that all of these frequencies are part of source uh, experiencing it itself as it has set forth. So yes, you are correct. Thank you so much. You mentioned having openness and awareness as a young child. How many parents encourage their indigo children to embrace these gifts rather than discourage them? This is something that we see in the star seed and indigo communities um, that can be a barrier and a, and a challenge for souls to embrace their gifts. However, um, it, it is usually contracted if the parents will be support, supportive or not. And it is an opportunity for you as a soul to come into your sovereignty and come into your power. Uh, this is something that uh, this dear channel experienced for herself, that her friends thought she was crazy. Her family thought she was crazy. Um, and her connection to the divine um, she had to allow that connection and the feeling of that unconditional love to override any of the insecurities that were um, implanted in her through her interaction with family, friends, and society. So it is a lesson oftentimes for you to remember who you are and recognize that others may be operating from unawareness. Um, and even still, you can be in your heart and hold compassion and not non-judgment as opposed to feeling attacked by these souls who simply have forgotten who they are. This is so beautiful. Before I ask you a few more questions, can we ask who you are channeling and bringing through for us? Yes, this is the Ninth Dimensional Arcturian Council of Light. Sweet. I love, we love the Ninth Arcturian Council of Light. Many of us here are part of that council, I think. We have another question for you. Do you have any guidance for those of us who've been working to manifest a divine union in our lives with a soulmate or a twin flame? Yes, of course. Uh, manifesting this reflection in your reality has to start with creating the feeling, the vibrational essence of union within your own being. Um, you can do this through 
connecting with source, connecting with the infinite I am that does already love you unconditionally. And through recognizing that that presence is already available to you and focusing on that presence and focusing on that, that love that is uh, in constant perpetual flow to you, you will vibrationally attune yourself to a union or a relationship that uh, reflects the frequency that you have activated within your consciousness. So what many do oftentimes when they are uh, looking to attract, as you call it, or manifest things, they're actually focusing on the lack of the thing. They're focusing on the lack of the partner. So perhaps the lack of love that they are experiencing in their reality um, and in attracting anything into your experience, you have to be vibrating as if you already have it. So you have to focus on the presence of the love that is already available. This can be very simple. You can focus on uh, beautiful friendships in your life and cultivate so much gratitude. Focus on the perhaps colleagues and co coworkers in your reality that um, also create this feeling of love and harmony within you or with your family. You can use anything to create the feeling of already having love in your life. And when this becomes your dominant point of attraction, as opposed to the absence of this experience, you will pull it in. So it seems like if we can actually visualize that which we want on all levels, not just in our love relationship, but in our life, then we can actually manifest it to such a high frequency, we can bring that in, is that right? That is correct. And manifestation, or we would say this, the speed of your manifestations is also about your own frequency. For when you are vibrating in high frequency energies, your manifestations come in faster. So many of you are um, creating things, however, perhaps creating them from lower vibrational frequencies such as fear. So we, we wish to provide an example on this. Um, let's say you really want to manifest a new job, um, but the, the focus is that I really would like to create more money. And if I do not manifest this new job, perhaps in the future, I will go, uh, my needs will go without being met. So you are trying to call in this experience from a place of fear. Um, it will take you longer to manifest the desired experience. And even if you do call in a job, it will perhaps uh, also contain some lessons or um, some karmic experiences based on the frequency that you attracted it with. Now, if you were creating the same experience through a vibration of love, you might say something like, oh, I really desire to work within that organization. I love their mission. I love their values. I love the thought of me being there. Yes, I love the thought of perhaps the more money that I would make in that within that organization, but I, I love the experience of me as a creator being in that reality and being stimulated by all of the different moving pieces, you see, it is a very different frequency. You will call in um, a higher timeline experience through creating um, from love and heart energy. It is quite potent. Seems like that is a huge message for us to create from love. So we have two more questions we'll finish up with. Do you have advice for twin flames in union who have children that are system busters with children busting at the bound, pushing at the boundaries and are already an embodiment of heaven? Mm -hmm. How can we foster these relationships and ensure we encourage our children to always stay connected to source? Yes, the children uh, who you are referring to as system busters and matrix um, busters, they are your teachers. And so the more you accept that they are here to allow you to see things through a, a new perspective that has not been available to humanity um, and sort of resist the, the, the mind's attachment to judging if what they are doing is socially acceptable or not for they are here to expand your perception on reality and you support them through allowing them to be them 
and allowing them to know that in all of their expressions, they are still love that you love them that your love is not based on a condition of them having to be a certain way for they are your teachers as we said they are also helping you to become unconditional in the way that you love that is so helpful we have another question that i i think we can answer in a general way because it's about the lower vibrations um, what if you're threatened with violence, for, for example, if you're gay, you're being threatened with violence or any other innuendos these days about violence in the maybe perhaps you could address that and diffuse those energies for us. Yes, of course, uh, many of you who are um, here to teach on energy, um, here to teach on true identity, which is just source, you uh, may be uh, consider yourself to be a gay or bisexual person or a lesbian person or a transgender person. However, all is just simply energy and you are a teacher of that. So when you understand the higher purpose of what you are here doing, that you are a teacher of unconditional love and that you have chosen this as a part of your path and your mission, you will not allow yourself to feel attacked by those who do not yet understand you. And when you shift out of perhaps uh, a victim frequency, you will not be a vibrational match to um, violence. This is not to disregard any experiences. We understand that many have experienced violence. Um, many have experienced judgment and hate. Um, and many, many have been rejected from their own family and friends. However, this is simply about you recognizing that within your own connection and union with source, nothing in the physical realm, it can ever truly be a threat. If you are experiencing a timeline wherein these things are presenting themselves, you wanna go inside. It is going to require some ego work that may be a bit challenging for the mind to grasp and understand where you are holding yourself separate from source's love and allowing maybe what other people are projecting onto you to um, shift your vibration for everything that you experience is created by you. You are the one infinite creator of your reality. Wow, this is so helpful for everyone. I can already feel it, Erin. And so to your guide, one last final question, which is that do you have a final message, a message, not final, a message for us just about the next period of time, how we can stay centered and, and be in our most mastered, discerned place. What they are explaining is that before we can shift into higher vibrational timelines, there are lower vibrational energies that have to rise to the surface. So these energies will manifest themselves in the form of events. Um, atrocities, uh, things in the physical realm that you would see as uh, being, um, being detrimental. You, you want to be, you want to start to become the observer. You want to start to be in the, new, the, the zero point energy of neutrality where you recognize that everything is happening for a higher purpose and reason, that everything that's happening is actually a part of healing and expansion. When you hold that frequency and you don't lower yourself into uh, fear consciousness, you are no longer uh, supporting the upholding of the matrix timelines, the, the timelines that are rooted in fear. When you shift into this vibration of love as your dominant uh, point of presence, you are holding the light, so to speak, for others who may not recognize that what's happening in the physical is really a shifting, a healing and expansion into more, more remembrance of uh, knowing yourself as all that is. So the key here is non-judgment and being in your heart. Those are sort of like the two, uh, the two main themes from, from the Arcturians today. Oh my God. I, you brought me close to tears at different moments, Erin. I could actually feel that their loving kindness and I could feel how they actually could tell what who was asking the questions and what was in the heart 
of each of you guys who had those questions about your family, your true love. So let's see what Alan has to say and Dr. Victor. That was really powerful, Erin. On first, so go ahead, Victor. You probably were here more than I'll talk after. Yeah. Aaron, I just want to share with you, uh, I incarnated into this lifetime a, a few years before you did. And uh, back in the 1950s, when I started manifesting some of this stuff, I was sent for psychotherapy as a child, five and six and seven years old, told that I was had an overactive imagination. It is, thank you for sharing that. It is so important that parents encourage their children, their indigo children, to come forward with their gifts, because those are the ones who will lead the way in the future. Thank you. Yes, wow. you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you, Erin. Uh, where are you located? Which part of the world? I am on the East Coast in the state. So I'm in the New York City, New Jersey area. That's where I am. I'm in New York oh, City. awesome. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. How were you able to access all this now? I mean, what opened up for you? What, what kind of connected you into that I realm? In general or in terms of how you saw me connect today? Yeah, like how did you have that awakening? I'm curious in people awakening. So mm -hmm. what did you tap into open this huge channel of knowledge? You know, how did it happen for you? So it really opened up in a higher capacity way through a uh, plant medicine experience and having a total ego death, reunited with source energy, just totally got blasted into infinity and like died, actually physically died, but um, they were able to um, put me on a, on a different timeline where the death technically didn't occur. So coming back into the body, everything was just blown wide open where I could just hear source in my head, um, hear angelic beings and um, galactic beings and all sort of celestial presences. So for me, th that was my path. That was my path. Beautiful. Amazing. We have a yeah. comment here. I'm sorry. I just want to tell her the comment. I share that wisdom, Erin. It's beautiful to see someone else channel cosmic wisdom. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, Erin. It's good to be connected with you. Yes. And uh, just because I love sharing the story of how these connections occur. Um, I messaged you a few months ago because I wanted to work with you. And then you saw the event, messaged me back and saw that missed message there. So <laughs> I'm glad it worked out, you know, it was meant to be. But I've been, you know, following what you've been sharing for um, just like a couple of months, really, and just really tuning into your energy. And I just appreciate your vibration and your presence for everybody. So just thank you for everything you do. Thank you so much for having me. And it's it's so synchronistic um, that I ended up being a part of this event. I just felt my guides going, hey, you should be in that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to see if it's okay or if it's like too late. So thank you so much right. for your flexibility. Well, I'm pretty sure I messaged you two months ago because I wanted you in this event. So it's just like, <laughs> I just love how it all worked out. Yeah, you know? it just all worked yeah. out. Um, so... <laughs> I do feel the light language um, activation coming through for this collective here and tuning into the intention of this frequency. Okay, this will be a heart chakra, a really big heart chakra attunement. Um, some of you are holding on to matrix frequencies in the heart, um, which is why if you are here to be a channel or if certain gifts are ready to come online, you can't fully open yourself up to them if you're still holding on to some, some past trauma, some pain. So um, we're going to be helping you to forgive. Forgiveness is a big theme with family, with friends, with people who have, who may not understand you or have understood you in the past, we're going to be helping you to forgive and release those energies and just help you feel the love of the divine in your heart to know that you are truly special and amazing. I feel myself getting emotional already because the frequency is really strong. So um, I'm ready to rock and roll if you guys are. You have a private practice. Can people see you do one on one sessions? How do you work? I, absolutely. So I do uh, take one on one sessions and really the work that they've been having me do is 
sort of priestess mentorship. So divine feminine leaders who are here to do this same type of work, because typically there's a lot of fear to move through and a lot of suppressed feminine energy that needs to be rebalanced. So that's the main work um, that I do in terms of one-on-one, -on -one. but I also do work with, um, some high quantum technology. So I work with Tashion energy frequencies and I also work with um, the Stargate. So I know um, the Stargate um, individuals were here a part of this experience, but yes. So I, I provide those healing activations for anyone who wants them as well through the frequency of the, the Stargate. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Neil. Good choice to bring her in here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's do it, Aaron. So you're going to do a transmission for us, light language? Yes, 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 yes. Right, ready. We are ready. You guys can, um, you can do eyes open or closed, whatever you prefer. Sometimes watch, watching these sort of, I like to call them quantum mudras, um, can provide like even a more intense activation. So okay. I'm just going to call on the diamond rainbow ray. Sending this ray through the heart chakra. Kitra yere kishiro kora kanaraki, kira kalara fia nyaraki at the shkotro karia nyaraki at thisi, your kora kayere shia naraka yere keti, your kora kaye shia naraki at tira naraku, kora kaire shiraka aranana katiri ereki, your kora katia siera kate ye shia naraka, ka yaraka yero kuro kore ki, kira katere shia naraka araka araka yere ki. They're talking about awakening this, awakening this infinite inner child inside that just wants to play and have fun. You are here to teach the human collective how to live in love and abundance. That creation is the ultimate gift. Dear ones, you must forgive darkness. You must forgive anything that you have experienced that was not in resonance with the frequency of love. It is time to let these go. We're doing some timeline work here for some of you, rewriting the past, allowing you to release some subconscious blockages. Angelic frequencies coming in, thousands of angels surrounding us, surrounding us, surrounding us, moving these lower vibrational energies up the fifth dimensional tube of light to be transmuted back into pure source light. And we are complete here. Thank you. <sighs> Aaron, amazing, awesome. We are so privileged to receive these these activations and transmissions mm. and light language. Uh, I hope you drop into the chat for a few minutes. I think people have comments for you. They, you might want to interact with them. Yes. I know we're going to see you again. I Definitely. hope so. Thank oh, you no, so much. Sure. Thank you guys for having me. Thank, Thank you. you.